The Rime of the Ancient Mariner, Part the Fourth. I fear thee, ancient mariner, I fear thy skinny hand, and thou art long and lank and brown, as is the ribbed sea sand. I fear thee and thy glittering eye, and thy skinny hand so brown. Fear not, fear not, thou wedding guest, this body dropped not down. So in other words, we learn that the mariner is not the living dead, which is always good to hear, isn't it? That someone's not the living dead. Alone, alone, all, all alone, alone on a wide, wide sea, and never a saint took pity on my soul in agony. The many men so beautiful, and they all dead did lie, and a thousand, thousand slimy things lived on, and so did I. So he tells us that the, a saint took pity on him. Um, it introduces a kind of religious idea at this point that develops in this poem. Um, his soul is in agony, though. He's for from what's happened. Um, so many men, these beautiful men, are all dead, and but the slimy, horrible things lived on, and so did the mariner. And we have that dore print of the dead sailors there. I looked upon the rotting sea and drew my eyes away, and I looked upon the rotting deck, and there the dead men lay. I looked to heaven and tried to pray, but, oh, or ever a prayer had gushed, a wicked whisper came and made my heart as dry as dust. Um, so he can't pray, can she? Um, oh, there's this whisper in the back of his mind, this evil whisper that um, stops him from being religious. Here we have the rotting sea. I closed my lids and kept them close, and the balls like pulses beat. For the sky and the sea and the sea and the sky lay like a load upon my weary eye, and the dead were at my feet. The cold sweat melted from their limbs, nor rot nor reek did they. The look with which they looked on me had never passed away. Um, so he's feeling intense physical pain. The balls of his eyes, like pulses beat, you know. Um, he, he's feeling a great headache, a kind of migraine, and the, all of the sky and the sea lay upon him like a weary eye, um, on, lay upon him on his weary eye, sorry, and the dead were at his feet. Um, but they don't rot, they're not rotting, they're not um, decaying, which is interesting, isn't it? An orphan's curse would drag to hell a spirit from on high, but oh, more horrible than that is the curse in a dead man's eye. Seven days and seven nights I saw that curse, and yet I could not die. So he can't die, um, uh, and he, he, but he has to carry on surviving. The moving moon went up the sky, and nowhere did abide. Softly she was going up, and a star or two beside. Her beams bemocked the sultry main, like April hoarfrost spread. But where the ship's huge shadow lay, the charmed water burnt away, away, a still and awful red. Beyond the shadow of the ship, I watched the water snakes. They moved in tracks of shiny white, shining white, and when they reared, the elfish light fell off in hoary flakes. So the moon's... Um, uh, sh uh, shines upon um, everything in a white fashion except where the shadow of the ship is that um, the, the has this um, awful kind of still an awful red about it this blood red of death about it um, he's watching these water snakes um, running round in the water um, elfish light, kind of fairy light, fell off in hoary flakes, hoary meaning um, white, um, 
flakes so um, there's a rather magical vision beyond the ship of these white flakes of the um, water snakes but actually where the ship is is this horrid red within the sh shadow of the ship I watched their rich attire blue glossy green and velvet black they coiled and swam and every track was a flash of golden fire oh happy living things no tongue their beauty might declare a spring of love gushed from my heart and I blessed them unaware sure my kind saint took pity on me and I blessed them unaware so he sees these beautiful visions completely in contrast remember in part two to the horrible slimy things that he's seen in the sea um, these beautiful um, water snakes um, are, bring out a um, spring of love from him and it gushes from his heart um, and he blessed them unaware he blessed them without him really knowing that he was doing it um, so indicating there's some sort of divine presence the kind saint this religious kind of presence that actually enabled him to bless these these beautiful things the self same moment I could pray and from my neck so free the albatross fell off and sank like lead into the sea so um, here we have the curse as it were falling away from him notice how in a few of his the parts of the poem it ends with the albatross um, remember the beginning of part one the albatross is shot in uh, the end of part two the albatross is hung about his neck and now we have the albatross falling off signal signaling yet another change